Welcome to the Ascension Public Schools webinar on insurance benefits. My name is Jackie Tisdell. I'm the Public Information Officer and will serve as moderator. Let's go over some logistics for the webinar. It will last for 30 minutes, including a presentation and Q&A session. All microphones will be muted except for our presenters. You can use your question chat module to submit questions. Those come only to me as the moderator. No one else will see them. I will address as many as time will allow to our panelists after the presentation. Those not covered will be either added to a frequently asked question sheet and posted on our website or followed up individually depending on the nature of the question. Your control panel can be minimized and maximized by clicking the arrows. And this webinar is being recorded and will be archived at apsb.org slash webinars along with information sheets like the presentation. Our panelists for today's webinar are our Superintendent, A. Denise Graves, our Director of Benefits Risk Management, Angie Peraza, and Senior Vice President, Employee Benefits Consultant for Hub International, Lynn Fontaine, Jr. Mr. Fontaine has served as the District Insurance Agent for over 10 years. At this time, I'd like to turn it over to Superintendent Graves. Welcome and welcome back to the Ascension Parish employees. Uh, today is an opportunity for all of our employees to have an opportunity to get additional information about open enrollment, which will begin on August 15th. Today is an opportunity for us to share with you the changes to our benefits packages, which will become effective on November 1st, 2016. Our desire for today is that all of you will have an opportunity to have an informative experience about our insurance benefits. Thank you and welcome back. All right, uh, folks, uh, we will be conducting our open enrollment from August 15th through September 16th of 2016. Our new coverage year begins on November 1st of 2016. Employees will have a personalized one-on-one -on -one conversation with a professional benefits counselor. Schedule of school visits will be out and available online soon. Just bear with us for, for the time being. During your session with the benefits counselor, you can receive explanations about your plan, make changes to your plan, update personal information. You can also learn about the new UNAM policies we have available and either enroll or waive coverage. Participation in the enrollment process is mandatory. If you do not go through the enrollment process, your coverage will be discontinued effective November 1st, 2016. Enrollment counselors will come to your location. Check with your supervisor about signing up for your session. Okay, helpful enrollment tips. If you're adding a dependent, spouse or child, please make sure you have the following. Social Security for dependents, date of birth, a copy of a marriage license for spousal co coverage, copy of birth certificates or adoption decree or any other pertinent legal document. Medical documentation for disabled child over age of 26. Please attend at your scheduled date. We will be providing substitutes for those who, uh, who need a substitute to cover their classes. As many of us uh, realize the cost of health plans have risen substantially in recent years. Most employees have passed, excuse me, most employers have passed on the cost of the, these increased costs to their employees. The school board has been absorbing the cost of these increases and currently contributes over 80% of the cost of our health plan. Keep in mind that we are self-insured for our health plan. These increases in premiums are due to a significant growth in plan membership plus an increase in the use of the plan. Everything costs a little bit more money. The 
school board cannot continue to absorb the increases of the plan by itself. Starting in November 1st, 2016, minor premium adjustments and benefit changes have been made to the plan. Retirees enrolled in the UHC Medicare Advantage plan will not be affected by these changes. One of the major changes the board has undertaken in, in reducing, uh, is, is reducing the vesting period for dependents from 10 years to 12 months. Uh, so basically, we're going to uh, not require a dependent to be on the plan for 10 years before they're fully vested. 10 year, a 12 month period will be the period that we are looking at. Uh, we will also work in our policy uh, a grandfathering provision so that if your dependent has already been on the plan more than 12 months, you will be allowed to have that uh, dependent grandfathered into your plan once you retire. Okay, we'll start on uh, your uh, medical benefits. Um, and Angie mentioned that the plan is a self-funded plan. That simply means that uh, the Ascension Parish School System is funding uh, uh, the cost of the plan, although we utilize Blue Cross for the network of doctors and to administer uh, the plan benefits. Um, ways that we can all control uh, the cost of the plan, first of all, and I'll compliment everybody, we've done a good job on this, the plan members have of staying in network, but when you utilize Blue Cross's network providers, you're maximizing your benefits and you're also um, getting uh, your services at the uh, um, absolute lowest cost because there's discounts when you utilize those providers. So make certain that you use a Blue Cross provider. Uh, second, stay healthy and informed. That's uh, uh, quite obvious. Thirdly, everyone should uh, be familiar with the wellness benefits under the plan. Wellness is covered at 100%. It makes uh, um, uh, absolute good sense to uh, take advantage of these wellness benefits. They don't cost you a dime and to make certain that you're in good health and if anything is um, abnormal that you find out it, uh, as early as possible. Um, utilize the emergency room only when appropriate. If you utilize the emergency room for non-emergency type of services, you are um, uh, accessing services that are, are much more expensive in another setting uh, such as a doctor's office or an urgent care facility. Prescription drugs, use generic drugs whenever uh, available. This one's very important. Prescription drugs are continuing to increase rapidly uh, and now represent over 30 percent of the total cost of claims in the plan. So please Talk to your doctor about lower cost alternatives on your prescription drug uh, uh, medications there. Utilize mail service when, uh, whenever possible and, and obviously uh, question costly procedures um, uh, in the plan. With regard to benefit changes, your deductibles your co-insurance, your out-of-pocket maximums, office visit, co-payments, none of this is changing. The only change in the plan from a benefit perspective is with regard to your prescription drug co-payments. You'll see that effective November 1st, the generic co-payment will be $15 preferred brand, which will be the majority of your brand name medications, $35 and $75 for non-preferred brand, which represents less than 2% of all of the prescriptions. So basically it's a $5 increase on the co-payments for prescription drugs. I will tell you this, do your homework when you're looking at your plan choices here because the main um, benefit that most folks access is going to be the office visit co-payment, which you see is $25 for a primary care visit, $40 for a specialist. In plan one or plan two, that benefit is the same. The real difference between the two plans is going to be in your deductible, plan one, 500, 
Plan 2, 750. And the out-of-pocket maximum, which is 2,500 for um, Plan 1, 3,500 for Plan 2. So the big difference between the two is $1,000 of out-of-pocket maximum between the two plans. When looking at the differences in cost, you'll see your, your premiums, effective 11-1. Do your homework here as well because the difference in cost between the two plans um, uh, is a significant amount of money uh, when you annualize that. These are your monthly deductions that will be affected on November 1st, Plan 1 and Plan 2, active as well as retiree. Dental benefits. There are no changes. We're going to remain with Always Care as our dental carrier. There are no ch changes in benefits or rates. You can continue uh, to receive 100% benefit for your preventative services, which are cleanings, x-rays, exams, once every six months. The plan pays 80% for basic services, 50% for major, 50% for orthodontia. There's a $2,000 benefit maximum per person per year, and if you do not utilize your entire $2,000, there's a $400 rollover benefit. So many of you have an increased amount beyond the $2,000 um, uh, for, uh, uh, for participation in the plan in the previous year. And then, of course, you see uh, the premiums. Um, which are not changing. There's no rate increase on the dental whatsoever. Vision uh, benefits will remain with IMED. Once again, no changes in benefits, no changes in rates. For those of you who wear glasses or contacts, this is an excellent benefit. Make certain that you familiarize yourself with the network providers. It provides a copay for your exams, it provides uh, co-payment for materials and, of course, benefits for your frames, lenses, or contacts. Premiums, once again, uh, will remain the same. Group life and disability will remain with Reliance Standard Life. No changes in benefits and rates for the life and disability coverages as well. As well. You're, uh, you are provided $50,000 of life and accidental death at no cost. You also have the ability to purchase increments of $25,000 of group term life. At this open enrollment, we are guaranteeing the uh, ability to purchase an additional $25,000 if you currently have coverage up to your $100,000 guarantee issue. So if you're do not have $100,000 of coverage at this time and you're wanting to increase your, uh, your voluntary life insurance amount, you can access tw an additional $25,000 with no medical questions and that's quite a, uh, a good benefit there. Disability coverage, once again, no changes in benefits or rates. Make certain that you check your beneficiary information and, and that this year we're going to be introducing uh, new UNAM worksite benefits, coverages of, uh, of whole life insurance, critical illness insurance, and accident insurance. Whole life insurance provides uh, the opportunity to purchase uh, coverage uh, with, that's, and the premiums are guaranteed at the age that's issued and they do not increase. There's no reductions in benefits as you age and most importantly the policy is individually owned and you can take your policy when you retire. There's a guarantee issue amount of $75,000 for employees up to age 50 51 to 80, $40,000 in coverage is available for your spouse and children as well. Critical illness provides uh, financial coverage for in a lump sum amount um, to cover you if you are diagnosed with any type of catastrophic illness. 
a lump sum benefit is paid upon first diagnosis of the covered illness and there's a guarantee issue amount of $20,000 for employees, $10,000 for spouse. No pre-existing condition uh, limitation or period for this coverage. A $50 annual wellness benefit. So when we were telling you on the medical side to uh, access your benefit, and it's 100% paid in wellness, you'll actually um, get awarded that $50 for taking care uh, of that wellness benefit. And dependent children are covered under this contract at no additional cost. From a uh, uh, um, disease perspective, the uh, diagnoses uh, that are covered, heart attack, stroke, cancer, uh, brain tumor, blindness, bypass surgery, uh, kidney failure, organ uh, uh, failure, paralysis, uh, an occupational HIV or coma, and then, of course, additional um, diagnoses. Uh, for children as well. So this policy provides a lump sum payment upon diagnosis of a critical illness. The accident coverage helps employees and their families to cover extra expenses associated with an accidental injury, whether it be to cover your uh, deductibles or coinsurance uh, or additional expenses associated with that accident. Uh, it provides good finite financial protection against out-of-pocket costs in the event of an unexpected in injury. Uh, the individual, uh, covered individual re receive a predefined lump sum benefit paid directly uh, to the um, insured uh, in the event of that covered accident. There's no maximum number of benefit uh, payments. This coverage also includes that $50 annual wellness benefit it's portable, you can take it with you at the same rate and same benefit, and it's designed to cover off-job related accidents. Okay, well, this was quite a lot of information to go through in a very short uh, period of time. Uh, one of the most popular questions I've been receiving is, is can we get a copy of the PowerPoint and the, the rate sheets in particular? Um, want to make sure everybody understands as soon as the webinar is over, the entire presentation and the rate sheets will be available on our website. So we knew we had to go through this pretty quickly to be able to get everything in in the 30 minutes. Um, one of the first questions we have is, um, I'm a new hire. When will insurance pick up for me and my family? It will be under the current plan or the new plan. And if if it doesn't pick up immediately, is there a COBRA policy to kind of get me between my current employer and, and now my new employer? Okay, uh, your insurance will kick in October 1st. You still have to go through the open enrollment process. So you, you have from August 15th to September 15th, when we get to your schools, you have to go through that process and then you know, the new year starts November 1st. So that's how that works. And COBRA would have been with your previous employer. All right, our next question is, is the life insurance only for employees? Is it available to spouses as well? Life insurance is available to uh, spouses and children. At a cost, obviously. It has to be purchased. Yes. All right, our next question. Um, is it possible to have family eye and dental if only the employee carries the health insurance? So could I only have the, the main health insurance but add my family to the eye and dental? For each line of coverage, whether it be health, dental, vision, uh, the employee has the opportunity to select whether to cover themselves or dependent family members. So the answer to the question is yes, you can have family dental and single health or uh, family health and single vision coverage, whatever you choose. Um, next question is, uh, you mentioned in your presentation there was a website to, to find to look at providers from Blue Cross Blue Shield. Will they also provide a book uh, with printed information or is it only available online? There are uh, print 
It will be available online. Um, next, we have lots of questions coming in. Um, our next question is, um, uh, we have someone that is, is due to have a baby on October 26th. Um, how will benefits take effect um, if we don't have the birth certificate? Uh, when when does the the timing on the on the enrollment for the health plan? The when a uh, a child is uh, born, you have 30 days from the date of birth to add that child onto the plan. And um, uh, of course, all of the proper documentation would follow. So they can notify. I'm sorry, Angie, go ahead. They can notify the insurance office uh, uh, and central office and, and uh, you know, provide the documentation for us and we'll get them signed up once the child is born. Our next question is, um, how do our new rates compare to health plans for other school districts or the state? Um, both rates and benefits compare favorably to many of the uh, peer uh, larger school districts and of course um, superior to uh, the rates and benefits uh, of the Office of Group Benefits. Um, our next question is, under the, the current plan, I guess with Blue Cross Blue Shield, it seems that we get charged for things that we were not charged for under United Healthcare. Um, what is the difference? The difference is that the plan was not being administered properly under United Healthcare. Unfortunately, a lot of things were uh, paid that were not part of the plan. Uh, they were paid incorrectly. They were accepted incorrectly. Uh, you know, again, we are self-funded, so every penny that is spent on this plan. Whether uh, you know when you go into the doctor and you pay a twenty-five dollar uh, copay, copay, that twenty-five dollars is not everything that's paid under that plan. If if you pay twenty-five, chances are the doctor charges one hundred and twenty-five. So that under hundred dollars is sent to as a bill to the school board. So again, if you don't pay it out of pocket, the school board takes the hit for any costs under the plan, whether it's the the prescription drugs whether it's any kind of uh, treatment, everything is paid for, not by some magic insurance company in the sky. All that Blue Cross Blue Shield does for us is they administer our plan. They manage it and for a fee, of course. And as a result of that, we are then able to use their circle of providers. Okay, our next question is, uh, is this the same critical illness plan as last year? No, uh, we've made some improvements on the uh, critical illness and uh, UNUM was not the carrier uh, offered last year. It's a new plan. Lower premiums, better benefits. Can the UNUM policy be taken with you when you retire? Uh, I mean, the one where you get the wellness benefits. Uh, the accident coverage uh, is portable, yes. Do you have any recommendations on deciding factors between Plan 1 or Plan 2? When, uh, when reviewing Plan 1 and Plan 2, and that's the reason we have two plans to fit uh, um, different needs, basically, um, What's usually done is you look at the difference in deductible, the difference in out-of-pocket cost, and you compare that to the difference in premium. So if one is, uh, if you're a member that they, uh, um, your history is that you have uh, a periodic minor illness from time to time, and remember the office visit copayment is the same in both plans, you might be more beneficial to take that premium savings and participate in plan two. Conversely, if you had, know that you have uh, some procedures coming up, 
um, you might want, well want to keep your out-of-pocket maximum lower and participate in plan one. So um, the real difference is in out-of-pocket maximum and then of course the premium that you weigh out those two differences. Okay, our next question is, has there been a change for employees for the 10-year participation requirement? No, not for employees, only for dependents. The next one is, I have a child who will turn 26 in May. Will she be, when will she be dropped and will my rate drop when she is dropped off coverage? Dependent children are eligible to participate up to age 26, so that, that coverage would terminate at the end end of, uh, of that month. And then of course if that would uh, uh, constitutes a change from uh, employee and, uh, and child to let's say single coverage, obviously there would be a, a, a change in premium. We only have time for a couple more questions. Uh, this one is for new hires or spouses, does our health plan cover pre-existing conditions? Yes. Um, uh, effective, uh, the effective date of coverage, there is no pre-existing condition limitation uh, applied to the plan. So anybody coming on to the plan uh, as a new member uh, is not uh, uh, limited with any type of pre-existing condition limitation that was done away with uh, with the Affordable Care Act. And our last question, let me remind everyone, if we, we weren't able to get to every single question, we will turn all the questions into a frequently asked questions page or get back to you individually if it's a, it's a personal question. But our last question today for the webinar for our panelists is, uh, who writes the plan? Does Blue Cross Blue Shield write the actual plan and benefit structure, or does the school board? The plan um, was, uh, when we initially left the Office of Group Benefits uh, um, several years ago, the plan uh, language was modeled after the language in the Office of Group Benefits Plan. And any amendments uh, that have made whereby if we change the uh, deductible, out-of-pocket, anything like that, although we've made very few changes to the plan, um, have uh, uh, just amended that plan document. So the plan document was modeled after uh, the Office of Group Benefits Plan. And you mentioned, um, Angie, if you could go one more slide so everybody has on their screen uh, some more information to follow up. Uh, this is the web address, uh, apsu.org slash webinars, where the recording of this webinar will be available later this afternoon, as well as the ability to download the PowerPoint and any um, additional documents uh, like the plan uh, information. Um, and then here's uh, two of our con employees that are good contacts for you if you have additional questions uh, that were, aren't followed up on. Uh, these are the, the uh, individuals that you can call. Uh, but Angie and Lynn, if you could just close out with, with letting everybody know uh, where and how will they find out the schedule for their open enrollment for their respective school or department? Well, we're working on uh, notifying all the principals and making sure we have a, a tentative schedule. Uh, and their principal or supervisor should be able to uh, provide that schedule for them shortly. Again, we're trying to get a hold of everybody, make sure that uh, the dates and times correspond to things that are going on on their campus or at their facility. So that should be happening, we hope, by the end of this, this week. But certainly by the time everybody gets back, uh, we should have some uh, sign-up forms where they can sign up for specific times to uh, meet with a counselor. All right, excellent. Well, that's 30 minutes. Thank, thank you to everyone for participating in today's webinar. We will have more information for you. Uh, as we close out the webinar, you're going to get a pop-up window. Please take a moment to complete a brief survey. 
that'll give us feedback on what you would like covered in future webinars and have a great afternoon.